that's going to be on TikTok, how Trump has to tell everybody how great he is. I th- I think this was a video. And I I love, I don't know about you, but I love sports and I love athletes who don't pound their chest. Maybe a little bit, you know, like Steph, but I... <laughs> I feel like and have always felt that you let your game talk, right? If you're amazing, if you're the GOAT, then you don't need to go around telling everybody that you're the GOAT. And this is one of the things that is very interesting to me about Trump. He spends all his time talking about how he's the GOAT. How he knows more than anybody about any topic. He knows more than anybody about about propellers and air. He he knows ev- more than everybody about everything. <laughs> it just it strikes me as as odd and it bothers me. Mike says Trump has always done that. He's a sales guy, always has been, not good or bad thing. It just says I I think it's a bad thing, Mike. And then the other thing that I'll add to that is how he makes up groups of people that support him. So he will tell you that that there's this group of scientists who totally support him. It's not true. World leaders support him. This group supports him. That group supports him. But he never can produce the he never can produce the actual people who support him. So that that kind of that kind of, oh Orion says especially about magnets yeah if you pour water on magnets that obviously destroys them according to Trump hey if you're just joining us on TikTok you've probably seen me I have followers there I was a talk radio show host for 25 years conservative mostly but now people call me a rhino or a liberal even, because I cannot go along with the antics and the lies and the behaviors of Donald Trump. So that puts me where, as a conservative, I'm not sure, but it's a strange place place to be in, because for 25 years, I have supported Republican candidates, I've supported Republican policies, but now here I am, fighting against the the uh, supposed leader of the Republican Party because I don't think he, if he does win as a president, he's not going to be effective unless he has complete control of the, of the House and the Senate. If not, he will only have control on, on just limited presidential powers. And I think that someone like Nikki Haley will be much more productive. Because she has a better chance of winning because she pulls from the middle and she has a better chance of leading and getting conservative principles in because she can work with the middle and other sides. Just my take. Again, those of you who are joining us on TikTok, Alma Cooking, Kenny Barrows, I should have put up a big you know, banner about what we were talking about, but this was just a... This was just a test to see if it works. Tell me, everybody, because we're broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitch. We're going out to everybody right now. And that's why if you're on one of those other networks besides TikTok, this is the only way I could come up with to make it happen. So let me know. Let me know if it works for you. One other thing on my mind, you know, I'm always, I I feel like nowadays I'm always bashing Trump, and that's because his antics are a daily basis. But I also feel like I should take some time and talk about some some conservative principles and and some beliefs that I have, and one of them that has been my on my mind lately is climate change. And what we should or should should not be doing with climate change. Now, when I ran for Congress as as a Republican and then as and then for the United Utah Party, people would ask me what, you know, what should we do about the environment? And my response was always the same. And that is that we should find common ground. 
That's my response to everything. You see, our leaders who represent us right now, they don't look for common ground. They look for disagreements and they play on those disagreements. Why do they do that? Why do they play on disagreements? Because that's where the dollars come in. And that is basically our fault. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. When I'm when I was running for Congress, I would send out a letter. The people who were who were you know giving me guidance, they said you got to send out a letter and say Nancy Pelosi this and the evil socialist Democrats this. And I'd send that out, and lo and behold, I get donations. And I'm like, that's not me. That's not who I am. I I don't feel like I should have to personally character assassinate somebody else in order to win a congressional seat. I'm not willing to give up my soul to do that. So I'm like, let's send out a letter talking about all of the things we want to do, the common ground solutions, and we won't mention the other side. We won't character assassinate. And and guess how much money I got back from that? Guess how much money we got back from sending out an email about building on common ground, bringing our country together. Guess how much money? Zero. Squadoosh. Nothing. We got nothing. And so it's no wonder that our politicians are trained to find differences and to amplify and magnify those differences because that's when we're willing to give them money. We're not we're not willing to give money to somebody who says, "You know what? I'm going to find common ground on this." You know what? I'm going to find common ground on this. It's just not going to work. And so the reason I bring this up is cuz people would ask me about climate change, and I would always say, "Look, I think we should build on common ground." And they're like, "Well, what's the common ground on climate change?" Um, Well, I think we can all agree on several things. I think we can agree on clean air. I think we can agree on clean water. I think we can agree on energy independence. And I think we can agree on renewable energy. Can we all come together on that? To me, that's, that's the starting point, okay? Now, the disagreement should be how do we get there? And when Joe Biden says we're going to get there in 10 years, that's either absolute ignorance or it's a complete lie to satisfy donors and supporters. There is no way on God's green earth that we gain energy independence or that we go all electric in 10 years. Now it's what, six years, five years? It's just not going to happen. Jake says renewable plus nuclear equals abundant energy and a cleaner planet. I'm a big fan of nuclear, and there's some really cool options nuclear-wise right now that do not have the risk. The nuclear technology that's being used right now in these old plants, that technology is so old. Linus joining us on TikTok, Pooh joining us. For those of you just joining on TikTok, a little bit strange. It probably looks normal to you, but we are going out on all of the other platforms because I'm trying something new. Anyway, so back to back to clean air, clean water, renewable energy, energy independence. These are achievable goals, but the problem is both sides are digging in their heels. So the left is digging into electric cars like California, and the right is digging into fossil fuels. The problem is neither of them are are a solution, at least in the short term, that's going to help the environment. And it's going to take a long time to wean ourselves off of one onto the others. I mean, if you if you look at the numbers, lithium batteries are killing the environment just as much, if not more, than fossil fuels. I think air, windmills, I, it, I mean, I, what, 10%, I think, of our energy comes from windmills. 
I think that's a viable solution. Obviously, where you put them so they don't freeze to death and stop working is important. Just like electric cars in sub-zero temperatures, probably not the best idea. But there's just like fossil fuels, there, there's a cleaner and cleaner way to do this where we can't find a, I, I think we can all find common ground on those four things. What we should be doing is we should be getting together and saying, how do we get to the final destination of cleaner air, cleaner water, renewable energy, and energy independence? That should be our that that to me is what good leadership would do instead of both sides deciding how we're different and criticizing the other side because they're evil. They don't understand why. Why can't we all get in a room together and say cleaner air, cleaner water, renewable energy, energy independent. Let's bring in industry experts. Let's have a blue ribbon commission, whatever it takes, and then let's make it happen. The answer is because the people we are choosing and because of the political control by both parties, there is no power. There is no fundraising. There is no support for getting things done. This is something I learned running for Congress. Nobody in Washington wants to get anything done. They don't. They just don't. And the reason they don't want to get anything done is because then what are they going to fundraise on? What are they going to say to you when they want to be elected? Who are they going to blame? They do not want to get things done. This is why we don't have a budget. This is why we always have to go to continuing resolutions, because every single time there's a CR Everybody gets microphones put in their face and they're, what do you think? And then the Democrats this and then that and whatever. And we'll fundraise here and we'll fundraise there. But if they just have a budget, then for two years or however long that budget is, then there's no political power there. And and so how does that all change? I really don't, I really don't know how that all changes, but... We have to we have to recognize what's going on. We have to recognize that we're getting played. We're getting played. They want us to think you're running around thinking, oh, make America great again. Republicans, they're fighting for me. No, they're not. And liberals are not. They are fighting for division to keep power. Now, there are some. You know, I think those who go there, you know, bright eyed and wanting to do what's right, I think there's some, but they get into that machine and then, and then what happens? You know, what happens? Let's see some of your, your comments. Germany is getting rid of nuclear plants. The risk is too big. Actually, I'm not sure, Aslan, you may be an expert and I'm not, but I can tell you that, for example, Bill Gates, the evil Bill Gates, uh, he, he, what was the name of his company? He has put together a company. They have developed a nuclear technology that uses expended nuclear rods. And it is incredibly safe. In fact, they say 100% safe. They actually had a deal, I think it was with Germany, might have been Russia, to go over and to test the very first site with this technology. And that was going to happen until Trump put in all of the, uh, what do you call it? I'm blanked now. Sanctions. Yeah. Until all the sanctions went in. And then that stopped that deal. So now Bill Gates is looking for another way. There are probably 10 different nuclear solutions out there that have very limited 
danger. And the Bill Gates one uses all these expended rods. And we could go on for something like 10,000 years with just expended rods, not even using any of the, the rods out there. Spencer says, hey, Jay, good to see you live. Spencer, great to have you on. If, in case you're wondering, your screen looks fine, but in case you're wondering, we are going out to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all of those places. They're all seeing TikTok screen. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's legal or not for me to broadcast TikTok screen. I may get a nasty gram. I may get canceled. I don't know, but I'm basically capturing TikTok and I'm sending it out to all of these other platforms where I'm live. Today was just supposed to be a test, but I've got politics on my mind, so why not? Let's see here. Let's go to Mike. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to figure this out. Hang on. Hang on a sec. Every time I go to grab the the comments, it goes all over the place. And it's not supposed to do that. Give me a second here. I'll figure it out. Okay, that should do it. How come it's not? Wasn't I doing this last night, everybody, and it was letting me do it just fine? I know that it was. Okay. So, Mike, I lost your comment. This is from Twitch. I mean, applying pipes and bags to... Oh, okay, I'm not going to read that. Jake, can't be only renewables. Got to have supplemental fossil fuels, nuclear. Let, so I I don't... I. Yeah, I do think we could get to a place with renewables. I mean, there's got to be some technolog technological advances. I do have a bright hope that we can get to renewables. Uh, Mike says the lie that carbon dioxide is a pollutant. You mean it took science 250 years from the discovery of CO2 to determine it was so-called pollutant? I don't typically think the amount of time that it takes to discover something disqualifies that thing as being real. Jake says a solved problem is of no use to anyone, says every politician. It's exactly right. Your politicians don't want to solve your problems because if they were all solved, imagine, imagine for a minute how much less money Republicans would get if they all got together in a room and they solved and passed comprehensive immigration reform. How much less money would they get? It's just like Donald Trump. He does not want these cases to go away. Because every single time he appears in a courtroom and gives lip to a judge, every single time he gets money, hundreds of millions of dollars. If suddenly we solve these problems, they can't fundraise anymore. Let's see here. Orion, humanity can either come together to make the future sustainable and habitable for future generations or fail to be worthy of the stars. I was kind of joking with my daughter the other night, but I wasn't exactly. I was telling her that the greatest contagion on the earth is us. You know, I was looking at these videos of on, you know, we see them on TikTok of like yellow jackets and and that lady who saves the bees. And she does it so so calmly, and she doesn't wear any protective gear, and she's all, and that's another episode of how we save the bees. And I look at how how these animals, not animals, these insects just take over the area where they're at. They could eat your house down termites. And I thought, there is no, there is no contagion on the earth. No animal on the earth, no insect on the earth that is as destructive as we the people. It just, it just, that's just the truth. Let's see. Mike says, in the simplest terms possible, oil is a renewable resource. The earth never stops creating oil. Why? Because oil is a byproduct of decay. Also, we have the technology to convert plastics back into oil, gas. Yeah, you know, I, I think I think that's fair. I'm not going to argue with that with you, Mike. 
but I, so let's just put it this way. We got to get fossil fuels to a place where, where they're better on the environment. I, I, that's a worthy goal. <laughs> Orion says, sometimes I wonder if the stars are better off without us. Mike says, nuclear power and any derivative is great for infrastructure, stationary power needs, but storage for electricity as an automobiles will never be feasible as an actual alternative for ICE vehicles unless the supposed promise of graphene comes to reality. Let's see. Feel Free Super says it is a pollutant in the air. Carbon dioxide reflects more heat downward and disrupts heat transfer between space and the Earth. And he also says oil is not finite. Let's see. Again, those of you who are joining us on TikTok, we're actually, whoa, man, I got I just set this up everybody. So please forgive me if things get a little, hang on, lock overlay. All right. I think I've got it. So it's not going to go all haywire. We are going out to YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, obviously TikTok. Let's see. Mike says, when you say we'll be able to do renewables only, are you saying in a couple decades or centuries, our power needs are too great for any renewable to meet. And that's assuming the wind always blows, sun always shines. I wouldn't I wouldn't put a date on it, Jake. I would say it's a worthy goal. So I think it's something we should always be pushing towards. That's the only thing I would say. That and I like I said, there's no way. Uh will we see it in my lifetime? No, I don't think so. But we do see signs of progress. We do see renewables slowly inching into our overall energy production. So I, I don't think that it's I don't think it's out of the question. When it will happen, who knows? Orion says, imagine humanity colonizing the galaxy in our current state, spreading war, poverty, disease, capitalism, religion. All the scourges of man to other races and planets. Well, I've seen Star Trek, Orion, and if I remember right, Earth became a place that was completely peaceful and they didn't need money anymore. So I, if Gene Roddenberry saw the future, in some ways he did, I'm going to trust Gene. <sighs> Let's see. I'm inventing dad jokes. Oh, <laughs> I know who that is. He's asking to join live as a guest. Inventing dad jokes today is just a test, but coming up, I will be adding live guests via TikTok, but I didn't even plan on spending this much time on. I just was trying to figure out if I could go to YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Twitch, and all of those things while at the same time going to TikTok. Now, TikTok eventually, I think, has a way that I can do this with TikTok Live. I don't have enough followers yet, so I said I'm going to do it, which is what I always do. Mike says the only way oil goes away is if decay stops. Manuel says checking in here for a roll call. Manuel, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Anyway, my point about commonality is much more a point about how our politicians do not want to solve problems. If they did, Washington would look so different. It would look so amazingly different. Here's how it would look. If they really wanted to solve problems, if they really wanted to solve illegal immigration, here's what they do. They all get in a room, they bring in experts, and they pound it out. And you get out the whiteboard and you say, no ideas are bad ideas, which is never true, but it makes you feel better. And you start writing things down. 
and eventually you come to a solution. You know, I was trying to think about a time when that happened. When did that happen and it was actually effective? Hmm. Can any of you think of a time when that happened and it was actually effective? They all climbed in, into a room and really weren't allowed to leave until they came up with a solution and they had disagreements. Can you think of a time in our history when that happened? Carolyn joining us. Is a Isabella, is that right? Joining us? Zach joining us? Hello, everyone. Can any of you think of a time when for common reasons a group of people got together in a room all politicians, all with disagreements, and they actually solved the problem. Anybody? Let's see. Phil Free Super says during and after World War II. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one. Mike is a little bit closer. Wasn't exactly 1776. Mike, you're close. David joining us saying, hey, Jay. David on YouTube, Mike on Facebook, thanks for joining us. Zach Peppa joining us on TikTok, thanks for joining us. There it is, Jake says the Continental Congress. Yeah, kind of the Continental Congress, but wasn't the Continental Congress the first one where they kind of came up with something? Mike says, but I'm rooted in reality, not pie in the sky, fool's errand ideas. Somebody's got to be a visionary, Mike. So this is, to me, this is what we're lacking in society. We don't choose visionaries anymore. We don't have anyone who defines who we are to become in our fight. That's what we're missing. We're missing true leadership. There are those in our history, some of the greatest, who defined who we are to become in our fight. And one of them that comes to mind is Lincoln. Now, you think about Abraham Lincoln. When you say, I'm rooted in reality, not pie in the sky, fool's errand, do you think it was not pie in the sky, fool's errand, when he said, and the states separated, when he said, no, no, no. That's not going to happen. We're going to go and get those states back. Do you think that was pie in the sky? But back to this idea of vision. Lincoln wanted to unify the states, but he refused to turn it into hate. He refused to turn it into ugliness, I guess is the word. You remember his second inaugural address? when he talked about with malice towards none. This was leadership. This was somebody defining who we are to become in our fight. Martin Luther King was somebody who could have come out and he talked of, he could have talked about hate and anger and all of these things. Instead, he said, I have a dream about us people being judged by the content of their character instead of the color of their skin. These are people who defined a better us. They defined a vision for us. We don't have these people anymore who define, a, what, what is Trump's defined vision for us where we are better? What is Biden's? I, to me, it's all policy-based. And uh, again, we use policies to separate each other. Jake, we'll just call you right. It was, uh, it was uh, the formation of the Constitution when a bunch of people who disagreed with each other got into a very hot hall. They had all the windows closed because they didn't want people peeking in. And they stayed in there with differing opinions, and they pounded out one of the most documents in world history. It can be done. It can be done. I promise you, it can be done. Jake says, I meant the Constitutional Convention. Ha <laughs> ha. Mike says, 
Oh, what policies has Nikki Haley put forward that make us a better place? Amnesty for criminal illegal aliens, ID for all Internet users. I don't agree with everything Nikki said. To me, when you listen to Nikki, she talks about she and I don't know if it's words. It's the way that she she acts, the way that she carries herself. I think she just said that we need to get rid of TikTok. I don't agree with that at all. There, there's no politician that I'm going to agree with. But again, Mike, go back, go back and look and watch her speech when they took the Confederate flag down over their state capitol. You will see somebody who defined vision and defined character. Now, she's in, she's in a presidential race. I can tell you races are very difficult because you have to, having run twice for Congress, there is a built-in conflict that is very hard to navigate because of our system. Carlito joins us. Spencer joins us on TikTok. Thanks, guys. Here's, here's what happens is first you have to win a Republican primary. And in order to win a Republican primary, you have to appeal to hardcore Republicans. And at the same time, while you're appealing to hardcore Republicans, you're hoping you don't appeal aggressively enough because when you win the Republican nomination, now you have to go after independents. So how do you navigate that? It is such a difficult role. I think one of the reasons Mitt Romney lost is because he leaned so hard into Republicans, he couldn't recover enough after that. And so I'll I'll give you an example. So many of you who followed my talk radio career, you know that for the longest time, I would try and call things, I would try and be an umpire for Donald Trump. There were days when I would come out and I would support his decisions. There were days when I would come out and I wouldn't support his decision. So I'm calling balls and strikes, balls and strikes, balls and strikes. And so then I run for Congress and it's my job now to point out to Republicans where I where I agree with Trump. So I sent out some emails saying, here's where I agree with Trump. This is something I had done on the radio constantly. So it was nothing new. I hadn't changed any opinions, but because I put them all together in one document and sent them out, everybody freaked out on me. Like, oh, Jay's running for Congress. Now he's pro-Trump. When nothing had changed in my opinions, nothing, I had just put them all in one document. And now suddenly I'm pro-Trump. And then when I want to appeal to to independence, I could put together a list. These are all the things that I've always felt. Or I could put together a list. These are the things that I don't like Trump for. And every single time, it's like we cannot live in a world where somebody actually has independent thought and can be on both sides. So Nikki Haley is in a tough spot. She's in a tough spot. (sighs) Mike said, let me see, Biden has a vision, but didn't do much about it. I, I've never felt my life like Biden has a vision. Biden, Biden won for, for one reason. And that is because Trump created so much opposition. Biden is, this this is one of the reasons why so many people readily believe that there was election fraud. And it's because of how uninspiring Joe Biden is. They look at Joe Biden and they look at Trump and they're like, are you freaking kidding me? How could Biden beat Trump? Biden did not beat Trump. Trump beat Trump. Trump created so much opposition that the middle all went towards Biden. 
So we end up with this guy. I don't really know what he's done. And now Democrats are in a quandary because they're going to let him run again. And once again, he is uninspiring. The only thing he has good for him is that the economy seems to be steadily growing. But he and the other thing he has going for him is that Trump is even more outrageous this time. He's even he's even more insane this time. So maybe that'll drive the center out again. But when it comes to inspiring, to firing people up, Trump wins that battle every single time. Uh, Let's see. Oh, man, I don't know why I can't scroll up all of a sudden on these comments. It's really bothering me here. But so if your comments disappear, I apologize. Orion says, I agree they should pull the plug on TikTok, but I also believe it in equal treatment under the law. That means all social media needs to be disconnected and people need to put this stuff down and go walk the dogs. I I don't believe in taking away any technology, anything from anybody because it gets abused by people. To me, that's not freedom and that's not the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. And I happen to believe that this is the job of parents. And uh, when it comes to things like social media and TikTok, and if we simply say because parents aren't doing their job, then the government has to step in and do something. I don't like that belief system at all. Let's see, Mike, TikTok's algorithms that run in Western nations is vastly different than the Chinese version of TikTok. They pushed to the top all content that is what you and I would consider the most beneficial conservative principles like family, health, motherhood. I, I, I don't have a problem that social media pushes to the top what I'm looking for. I have no problem with it at all. Here's where I have a problem. My problem is when I watch a video for five seconds and now the algorithm thinks, I want to see that type of video over and over and over again. And YouTube does it too. So I did a video on this. Maybe you saw it. I did a search. I got a new a new prescription from my doctor. I did what I always do. I rushed home and I got on the YouTube and I typed it in and got, got information about that particular drug. Now, suddenly YouTube thinks I want to know about every freaking prescription on the planet. Everything they recommend to me is a different prescription, as if I'm like a freaking pharmacist now. That's what drives me crazy. So, and I'm sure you've experienced this on TikTok. If you look at something for two seconds, you're so worried about it showing up in your algorithm that, man, if you don't catch me fast, I am flipping through stuff so fast. Not because I don't want to see it, but because if I do, like just happened to me recently, there was a guy, I don't know if you saw it, he had a huge black widow on his on his hand. And I'm like, oh, that is disgusting. And I wanted to see what happened. And the black widow kind of set in there. I don't want to see a bunch of videos about Black Widows. I don't like videos about spiders. I always have dreams about spiders. I don't need any more of that. But because I watched that one video, for the next month, I'm getting spider videos in my TikTok. That's what I don't like about the algorithm. But let's let's be honest here. It's a self-fulfilling situation with everything, social media, news, everything. We want content that is appealing to us. And we don't just do it with social media. We do it on our TVs, right? I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm checking, you know, I'm favoring stuff on my TV and I'm looking, I'm not looking at the stuff that I don't want to watch. I'm going right past it. So I'm manually choosing what I want to watch. The only difference is that the algorithms, the the social media algorithms are doing that. They're providing that service for us. And so we want it. 
and they're giving it to us. The only question is when it's abused, when what they're giving us is not really what they want, what we want, but they're feeding us propaganda or something like that, or they're feeding us fake news. The the biggest problem that I see is that we've given up any attempt to validate or verify the information. Because if it fits into our into our belief system, then it must be true. So we like it, we share it, send it out to everybody, and we end up participating in sharing propaganda. We become part of the propaganda machine. And that, to me, is the scariest thing. When you talk about Russia collusion and all of those things, there was no collusion with Trump. None. And by the way, people forget this about the Trump collusion thing. He was exonerated. So you can say it was whatever, but the right thing happened. He was exonerated. Anyway, get sidetracked. The idea was, Russian interference was, that they could feed us fake news and the people would spread it for them. We were the pawns. We were the propaganda pawns. And that is what's scary to me. And you'll notice even today, like Mike, uh, one of our regular listeners, he brings up stuff and I'm not always sure about it. So... What do I do, Mike? I sit right here while you're on and I'm like, I'm going to look that up because I've never heard that before. Maybe I said it wrong. I'm going to verify it. How many people will just sit there and go, no, that's not true or block you or whatever else. The minute I see something that that may be too good to be true, that backs up something, whatever, I'm on the Google, man. I'm looking stuff up. Because I don't want to be a propaganda pawn. And maybe one of the reasons is because I saw Goebbels in World War II spreading propaganda and using it as a, a huge weapon. And all he had was newspapers and radio. He didn't have the Internet. Can you imagine Joseph Goebbels now? It would just be frightening right now. Just frightening. Let's see, Orion, Biden lacks imagination, resolve, creativity. Yes, it's uninspiring. The hospice nurse needs to give him dinner and turn back on Matlock. I I, I think the biggest problem is, is who is his vice president. I do not see him. If he makes it the next four years, wow. And there's a group of people called super agers. I think that's what they're calling them, super agers. Maybe he is one. Mike says, I think I wasn't clear. TikTok pushes nonsense. Trans ideology is rapidly pushed on the top of the algorithm in China. And that stuff is curiously absent. Interesting. I I don't have any idea what China is pushing. Is it Jen? Jen Rosé is asking to be invited to the live as a guest. I will be bringing in, that's one of the things I'm really excited about is bringing in live guests on TikTok. But today is just a test to see if all my systems work. If you're on TikTok, you don't really know that you're also being broadcast over to YouTube, to Facebook, to Twitch. What are the other ones? Twitter, LinkedIn, Today was my test to see if that would actually work. And it is working because we're getting comments from Facebook. Unfortunately, if you're on TikTok, you can't see the comments of everybody else, but they can see yours. So (laughs) I don't know how, how you feel about that. Madeline just joined Again, just trying it out today. I do. I am excited in the future because in TikTok, you can bring in live guests. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. Although my camera is not as good. It's my iPhone camera. It's not my studio camera. So, and you can see it's not my normal green screen. And you see that? So 
but there is a a, a lack of quality that I'm used to. Uh, let's see. Mike says, I don't have TikTok, bruh. I got into TikTok because I was posting to TikTok. And so you know, I figured if I'm posting to TikTok, posting my videos, then I thought maybe I should, you know, actually know what's going on. And TikTok can actually be, let me put this carefully. It's not a good source of news. It's a good prompter of news. Unfortunately, most a lot of people think it is a good source for news, and I that's bothersome to me. What I use it for is if I'm flicking through and some and there's some news story or something, then I immediately jump off TikTok and I go to news sources and to find out if that's true and what's going on. I do not rely on TikTok or any social media to be my actual source of news. Madeline joining us on TikTok. Raymond, hey guys, hello. Uh, We're just doing random thoughts today, random political talk. We're actually talking about the benefits of TikTok right now. Let's see. Orion says, yeah, stay away from that TikTok. The format is like crack cocaine. It is. I... (laughs) I have gone down the TikTok hole. I don't even know what I'm looking for. That's the thing. Every once in a while, it makes me laugh. But, you know, Mike says, one of the reasons why I may disagree with many of your takes, but I respect your willingness to search. Mike, I think you and I both, and so many people in this, I'm not in it to be right. I'm not. I'm in it to find out the truth and share it with you. And uh, I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong. I have no problem admitting when I was mistaken. I have no problem going and find out more information. And if somebody like Mike says, no, what you said is not true, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find it because I think that we're not going to change anything in this world If we're all running around ignorant and sharing things that we heard but aren't really true. Let's see. We've got Punky on Twitch saying, hello, Jay McFarlane. Hey, uh, Punky, thanks for joining us. What's the topic? We were talking about whether or not TikTok should be banned and the terrible impact of social media. As we're all on social media... So any feedback you have, David says that's basically Twitter as well. I'll tell you how much, how little I know about Twitter. All of these things at the top, all of, wait, where is it? All of these things at the top. I have no idea what any of that means. None whatsoever. Because it's like my first real live. But Punky says, who wants to ban TikTok and why? I saw a clip from Nikki Haley. There's a state that just did it. Isn't it New York State that just just did it? Hang on. You guys can help me out. New York bans. Is it TikTok? You guys help me out here. New York City banned TikTok on government-owned devices on Wednesday pointing to security concerns. All right. I understand that. The security of TikTok is suspect. Let me see. Where is TikTok being banned? Some countries have full bans on TikTok, including Afghanistan, India, Iran, Kyrgyzstan, Nepal, and Somalia. So we'll join all of them. (laughs) Let's see. Punky says, I don't watch a lot of it. Are they doing something illegal? No, it's not. It's not about illegal at all. It's about I think it's mostly about youth and how much time they are spending on it. People get and even adults, they get caught in this TikTok uh, rabbit hole and hours go by and you don't even realize what has happened. And I think it also impacts your attention span. Uh, It's impacted mine 
you know, I'm looking at those videos so fast. And if they don't catch me immediately, I'm like, whoo, whoo, whoo. I'm like gone. Punky says, was the clip you saw a deep fake? That's a good question. Let's see. There's so many deep fakes out there. Let's double check. So this was, so this was November 17th. 2003, the presidential candidate has argued that social media platforms should better police certain users and content. Nikki Haley ratcheted up her calls this week for the U.S. government to ban TikTok, the Chinese-owned social media platform, after some users weighing in on the war between Israel and Hamas promoted Letter to America, a text written by Osama Bin Laden on September 11th. So, yeah. Let's see. Punky says, Punky on Twitch says, I know parents are suing TikTok for what it does to their kids. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that argument. I Look, I mean, you're responsible for what it does to your kids. And, and in today's world, there are so many freaking tools out there that you can use. Tool number one, don't give them a freaking phone. Tool number two, every phone can be made a dumb phone. Every single device can be made a dumb device. There are so many parental controls out there. There are so many ways to control. I always use phones for leverage, you know, because you give them a phone and it's a dumb phone and they're like, I want to text my friends. And I'm like, you haven't earned the trust to text your friends yet. So we decide what that trust looks like. And then I turn on texting, but it turns off at eight o'clock at night. And they always come to me, dad, I was in the middle of a conversation. And I'm like, too bad. And I have the right to take your phone and look at your texts and and all of those things. And was it perfect? No. But And then once they earn trust there, then they get more trust. I mean, my whole parenting style, not perfect, but was a world of expanding and retracting freedoms. When you earn trust, you get more freedoms. When you burn trust, the freedoms come back. And there's just no excuse in today's world. To, it's like parents who sue because their kids ate too much Fruit Loops. I'm like, Wait, hey, how do you, who bought the freak of Fruit Loops? So that drives me crazy. That absolutely drives me crazy. Mike says, no, it's because it pushes body modification, debaucherous behaviors, et cetera. J.R. Flip joined us on, on uh, TikTok. Rachel Simmons, Kentucky, hello. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about the evil social media. Punky says, I wish Twitch would clamp down on misinformation. You know, Punky, I don't I, I don't spend any time on Twitch. My daughter has a decent following on Twitch. But uh, the only thing I do is I publish to Twitch. I don't I don't I couldn't tell you anything about it. Mike says, you should look up the Tourette's outbreak after a couple of kids posted on TikTok. Then there was a bizarre spike in people claiming to have Tourette's. I believe it faded after a while. I, I don't know anything about that, Mike. I do know that there are several creators on TikTok who have Tourette's and have shared their stories. Orion says, my daughter is 13. She's not getting a phone until she gets a job and pays for the plan. Our kids always got the hand-me-downs, right? And this is, my kids will brag about this story. I, you know, like I said, if they did something wrong, then they lost an hour of texting. And so their phone would turn off texting-wise at like 7 o'clock. And I remember one Christmas, my daughter will tell you the best present she got that Christmas was I gave her an hour back of her texting. And she was so excited, and it didn't cost me anything. So you can be creative you know, don't let your kids win that battle. You can, you can fight that battle. You can win. Mike is asking Punky on, on Twitch, who determines what is misinformation? What if they get it wrong? We saw that during COVID. That's a great question. 
It's a great question. Something like COVID required so much time and effort to really research. And people would find stories with headlines and they would not read the stories. It's still happening. There's still people talking about, you know, making all kinds of claims about COVID. And a lot of people made good faith efforts. Like I had somebody who was telling me that masks don't work and they showed me a study that said masks don't block that they only block the the micro the micro I don't remember the actual terms the micro molecules and they don't block the larger saliva molecules what he didn't do the research to find out is that it isn't the micromolecules that spread. It's the larger saliva molecules that spread. So he thought he had found, you know, the smoking gun about masks and just hadn't gone all the way, but was making a good faith effort to find out the truth. You guys remember that whole time I dove into it, man. (laughs) I lived, ate, and breathed COVID information 24-7 if you guys remember that. And I also did the same thing with election fraud 24-7 and just, you know, would would spend hours trying to verify the truth and see people still, still to this day, try and challenge me on election fraud. Let's see, any other questions? Got to figure out these comments so I can scroll up. If you are just joining us on TikTok, this is my experiment today just to see if I can go from TikTok to Twitch to Facebook to YouTube. And I would say, wouldn't you say, everybody, give me a thumbs up. Did the experiment work? Is this something you can handle? I know it's not the same image quality. I know it's not what you're used to. But it is my workaround to be able to get to all of these networks. So give me a thumbs up or a yes if this is doable for you. And then when I get to, I think I have to get to 10,000 followers on on TikTok before I can use their TikTok live. Even then, I don't know if I can bring in all of the other networks. I have a workaround for that all ready to go. I mean, just to do (laughs) what I'm doing now, I'm using four different machines. Oh, and by the way, (laughs) I I shouldn't uh, shouldn't tell you this, but because I'm back in the game, many of you know, I took about, about nine months off from doing any content because I started a business and because I was down. I was frustrated by politics and... Honestly, I was ready to give up. I started becoming a prepper and all of a sudden just got the energy back, got the excitement back. And so I got set up again. I, if you if you follow me on any of these networks, you know I'm posting at least four videos a day because I'm back in the fight. I'm back in the game. And so in order to do that, I now needed to be tracking all of my news sources again. And so (laughs) my wife is laughing at me. I'm going to try and show this to you, but I'm real shaky. So I'm going to try. If you look over here, let's see. Can you see my TV setup? I don't know that you can. Oh, you know what? Because of the green screen, it's not going to let you. I'll have to figure out, yeah, it's not going to let you because of the green screen effect. I'll have to show you another day. So I'll describe it to you. Up here, so normally to do my job, I have one, two, three, four, five, six screens just for my day job. Then I have another screen that runs my teleprompter. And then... (laughs) The two screens that I put in, I have 32-inch screen mounted up here, and I have another one up here, and those are the news screens. So one running Fox, one running CNN all the time. 
So that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you count the iPhone, that's 10. <laughs> oh, it's an addiction. It's horrible. <laughs> but I'm back in the game. Let's see. Mike says, oh, Orion says, what you have, sir, is a multi-platform if you can keep it running. Yes. Yes, I do. I'm running out on my iPhone signal. I'm going out on my computer. My computer is sending out to all of the different networks. Orion's on Facebook. Punky's on Twitch. We've had some YouTube comments today. We've got TikTok going. <laughs> We're talking about all my screens. <laughs> Mike says, side note, regarding your tremors, I wonder if you took up guitar playing to help force focus control into the shaking. Worst case scenario, you probably come up with some awesome rhythm signature. <laughs> so those of you on TikTok, if you don't know, I suffer from something called essential tremors. Can you see that? It's a family trait. I got it from my dad and I shake and I take medication for it. I have taken medication today and this is actually good for me. So it makes it very hard for me to type. I use dictation like crazy today because nowadays, because when I type, I do double letters, right? So it's very difficult to type. And again, this is with the medication. And everyone in my family laughs at me. I wonder if I can duplicate it because when I, <laughs> they always know when I walk down the hall with a dish, if it's a dish with a spoon in it, <laughs> they hear me coming because it just goes ding, 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 ding. Like I could never sneak up on somebody. So we laugh. It's fun. It's a good time. And, you know, it's just something something that I have to deal with. And it also results in when I'm in a heated situation, it is kind of fight or flight. I start losing breath. My voice goes away. It happens when I'm around individual people, which is really weird because I can speak in front of large groups of people and have no nerves about it. I mean, none. Orion knows this. I can I speak in front of a thousand people and yes, you'll still see me shaking, but it's not because I'm nervous. I'm fully confident in those scenarios. But when I get into a small group of people with strangers, it, it, it is very, very difficult for me. Like at church, I can't be the first person to walk into a room. My wife has to walk in before me. When I and I think it's one of the reasons why I dropped out of high school because I couldn't I couldn't walk into a room because it, I would just start shaking and so I found ways not to go to school. If I, I found a I found out that the theater door wouldn't close all the way, and so I would sneak into the high school theater during the day. So I'd walk the mile and a half to school and I would get to the theater and the door was open and I'm like, great. And I would go inside. And at this time they had made the, they were doing the play. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. And they had made all of these, like, like they look like giant blocks, kids blocks, you know, toys. And I would crawl under them and I would sleep all day. And then when school got out, I would walk home like nothing happened. And my parents were never around to know that I was failing or that I wasn't going to school. And so finally, I'm like, you know, why am I walking a mile and a half? So what I did is I, I took some plywood and I, took, I put it up in top of the garage up in the rafters and I put a sleeping bag up there and a pillow and I would walk out the front door to go to school. I'd walk around the side of the house, go into the side garage door and I would climb up in the rafters and I would sleep all day long. And that's what I did instead of 
dealing with this condition, not knowing that I had it and not knowing about the social anxiety that comes with it. And in fact, I didn't even, I didn't even really know that it was treatable or even identify what it was until I'm going to say maybe six years ago, six, seven years ago. I was at a high school. I was at Harriman High School and they were doing they were doing a showing of a film. What was the name of that film? I can't remember, but it was a film about about child anxiety and it was a screening of that film and one of the reasons they had screened it there is because they had had a a rash of suicides. And they were trying to figure out what to do about it. And because I had told my story on the air several times about my bout with suicide ideation, they asked me to sit on the panel. And so there I was. I was sitting and watching this movie about all the things that this these kids go through. And all of a sudden, I'm like, this movie is about me. I saw I saw my whole life pass before my eyes. I'm like, this movie is about me. And I'm like 49 years old and I'm just figuring out. I just thought I was like like somebody else, you know? I just thought, you know, my nerves were getting to me or something else. And no. And so I started getting help and it has mitigated a lot of those problems, but Man, when people tell me, you know, mental health awareness is is not real, I do think that we jump too quickly to that diagnosis. And I do think that we need to teach coping mechanisms that are not being taught. But in my case, I couldn't function today without it. And my life is so much better. But even now, there are days where the chemicals in my brain just don't connect. I wake up in the morning, I tell my wife, I am dark today. And I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to do anything. And it usually goes away. The medication I it used to last for weeks. The medication I have makes it so it'll only last a day. But so all of that, Mike, because you mentioned you you mentioned the essential tremors. So if any of you have essential tremors, if you're fighting it, let me know. I'd love to kind of commiserate with you and share what I've been with, with gone through and and the different medications and things. It is not Parkinson's. One of the ways that you can tell is if you put your hands down and you don't shake when your hands are at rest, then that's a really good good sign that you have tremors, not Parkinson's. If you put your hands down and you continue to shake, you can't see it. But when I put my hands down, there's no tremors at all. That's one of the that's one of the ways that you can know. I'm just looking up at CNN. Haley again calls Trump unhinged. I don't think anybody would deny that, would they? Let's see. Orion says I discontinued my Patreon contribution because you had been going gone so long. I saw that, Orion. I expected you to, and anybody else who has been contributing monthly, I. At, at at this point in my life, I have stopped worrying about subscribers. You're not going to hear me ask for subscribers. I've stopped worrying about Patreon and those kind of things. I have the equipment I need. Yeah, there's a monthly expense for podcasting and and things like that. But I, I, I've stopped worrying about all of that. I'm very thankful if you add up all of the views that I'm getting every single week right now, it's between 20 and 30,000 views between all of the platforms. I can't believe that. That is amazing. And, you know, I know some people look at, you know, they always look at subscribers. I, I don't look at those numbers anymore. I, I, I just don't care. I If I can reach 30,000 viewers a week, 
And that's spectacular. So I'm really thankful to have that platform. If you subscribe, great. I don't even I don't even know if I still have a setup where you can where you can subscribe. So I'm not worried about Orion. I'm just glad you're here. Mike says, looks like a temple in the blue area. Is that are you talking about my background? Orion says it's a temple. Jake says, Think you missed my comment earlier. Do you think Nikki's speech you've referred should be given more weight than her current comments or declarations? No, I just think that it it speaks to me who she is and what type of person she will be in difficult times. I, I cannot think about a more difficult situation for a politician than she was in at that moment. She told me that she wasn't out to politicize that event. She was not out to turn one side against the other. I think that it's hard to be that person in a political campaign. My belief is that that is what you will see when and if she becomes president of the United States. Orion says, as a political consultant, I would advise Nikki to continue her primary challenge to the last state. Donnie is going to go to prison here soon, I think, or dead or both. If Nikki just hangs tight, she may become the presumptive nominee. I said this last night. I think that she, even if she only has a dollar left, she needs to stay in the race, just in case. I mean, all signs point to Trump being the nominee. But just in case, she needs to stick around. I totally agree with you. Mike says the walls are closing in. Orion, essential tremors doesn't sound very essential. That's a bad name. They should go back and call it annoying tremors. I had, (laughs) I had, you know, I used to teach a lot in church. I always taught, if you're not LDS, if you're not Mormon, you don't really know what this is. But I taught a class, it's called Gospel Doctrine. It was my favorite thing to teach. And it's kind of Sunday school. And I would stand up there, and before we had technology, I would hold a piece of paper. And of course, it would shake. And I had a lady, a sister came up to me one day after after my lesson. And she says, I just want you to know what an inspiration you've been for me all of these years. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Thank you. And she says, it's because I can tell you're so nervous and you still teach such great lessons anyway. And I'm like, how do you know I'm nervous? And she says, it's because you shake like crazy. (laughs) And I'm like, do I tell her that I'm not nervous? (sighs) Or do I, do I let her still feel inspired? What do you think I did? <laughs> Let's see. Mike says the aggregate polling across the board has Trump ahead between four to five percent, and that was never the case in either the sixteen or twenty elections. Yeah, it's a it's a long way, and. I still think it would be very difficult for Trump to win. I think in order for Trump to win, what Trump is asking for would have to happen. Stock market crash, incredibly high inflation, unemployment going way up. The one thing Trump really has going for him is the immigration problem, but they're trying to legislate that right now and And Trump is not doing himself any favors, whether or not the legislation is good. He's not doing any favors trying to block that. He should just continue to talk about the immigration problem as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, I, like I said, Trump creates so much opposition and a a lot of people are, are confused about why Trump won in 2016 anyway? I I don't know if I've shared this with you, but I know we've been going for an hour and a half, but I still feel like talking if you still feel like listening. Carrie, Sean have uh, joined us on TikTok. Thank you for stopping in and saying hello. I have a theory about why Hillary Clinton lost during 2016. And if you remember, the polling for Hillary was so high. She was just going to whomp Trump. So much so, she had the balloons ready to go. Trump didn't even have a speech ready. He was ready to get stomped on. Remember, the polling was just 
so not in his favor. And he wins. But he didn't win, like, by outperforming his projected numbers. That's what people miss. He didn't win because he blew the the polling out of the water. So what happened? It was Hillary who underperformed. And here's what I think happened. I've covered elections for 25 years. And I covered them enough to where I knew each county and when the counties would come in. And you could predict how the counties would go because you knew which counties were blue and which counties were red. And so here we are. It's election night, 2016, and Trump's ahead and he's ahead. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. He's still going to lose because there's a couple of counties that still aren't in. There's Detroit and Miami-Dade. And I had watched so many elections where the, the candidate was ahead. And in the last minute, these blue counties came through and changed everything. And so here I am, based upon the polling and based upon the numbers that had come in, I'm waiting for Miami-Dade and a couple of these other blue counties to come in. And they were supposed to come in for Hillary Clinton. And they didn't. But it wasn't that they went blue. I mean, that they went red. It's just that they didn't have the numbers. They didn't show up. So what happened? Here's philosophy by j Here's what I believe. And I've looked at the numbers quite a bit. I believe that the fact that Democrats saw that Hillary Clinton was going to blow Trump out of the water by 14 percent and that everybody assumed that that was the case, I think Democrats stayed home. They didn't want to get in line. Trump was going to win. I mean, Hillary was going to win. And so they stayed home. And that's why Trump looked up and said, wait, what? I won? And Hillary went, are you kidding me? And all the Democrats woke up the next morning in shock. And every one of them vowed that they would never let that happen again. And they didn't. And they haven't. So I wouldn't sell Biden short. But in my opinion, Hillary lost. Trump didn't win. And if that's the case then that means Trump was not a good candidate in 2016. It means he was not a good candidate in 2020. He doesn't have much to hang his hat on. That's why I think Hillary Clinton is infinitely a better choice than Trump, because she will attract the middle. Just my two cents there. Nathan joining us. Hey, Nathan, on Facebook. He says Trump can't pull in the moderate Republicans or the independent voters. He lost once to Biden once already. You are correct, sir. Carrie joining us on TikTok. Sean also joining us on TikTok. Mike says Hillary lost because she was a terrible candidate and the media was carrying her water and enough people saw through her real character. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I think that the polling was clear. She was the anointed one. She should have won that election. And if you look at the polling, Trump, although he wants you to think it was the best victory ever in human existence, although he didn't even win the popular vote, if you look at the numbers, Trump did not outperform anything he was predicted to perform. It was Hillary. Mike says, I too fully expected Trump to lose in 2016. I didn't even vote for him. Mike said, yet for years, Hillary cried about losing, pushing lies about Russian collusion. Well, let's be clear about Russian collusion. Russian Russian interference happened. That was documented. That was verified. Collusion, the word collusion was about whether or not Trump participated in that collusion. but. It was verified that Russia had an impact on the election. Did they have enough of an uh, an impact to change the election? No, I haven't. I haven't seen any of those numbers. 
Mike says she lost the instant she vilified half the country as by calling them basket of deplorables. Well, I don't think half the country felt like she was talking to them. That was a a terrible, terrible thing to say, though, obviously. <laughs> TikTok is saying, great job. You've gone live for 90 minutes. Don't forget to take a break. <laughs> They forget that I used to be on the air for three hours a day. Of course, we did have commercial breaks. There was one point in Dallas where I was on the air for five hours a day. I had a co-host, but we used to do five hours a day every single day. I don't don't, see the shake. See it? I don't have any idea how we did that. (sighs) One of the other reasons I'm staying on is because My wife wanted to go grocery shopping, and I have to say this quietly, I really didn't want to go, so (laughs) I'm hoping, I'm hoping that when I get out of this live, she will have taken my daughter or something. Oh, in fact, I can, should I spy on her? Hang on. Let's see. (laughs) I'm so evil sometimes. Let's see. She did go without me. She's a wonderful wife. (laughs) Don't you ever tell her what I did. Orion, don't you ever tell her. (laughs) Let's see. Mike says, I'll wager a box of ammo for you when we go shooting that Biden will be replaced and not run for his incumbency. I think that the Republicans would be idiotic not to replace him. But I still think Biden can win Trump, can beat Trump. And that will be for the same reason as last time. The, the middle will not join Trump. They won't. They just won't join Trump. So I believe it's, it's no question that Trump wins the nomination, barring, I don't even know what I can say barring because he could be behind bars and still win the nomination. I mean, we could be heading for a constitutional crisis like we've never seen. There's nothing that stops a presidential candidate from running for a president, even if it's behind bars, unless it's specifically for insurrection then that could be it. But interference and fraud, those kind of things, you'd have to pin somehow insurrection on him. And you'd have to get the Supreme Court to stand for it. We'd have the first president ever serving as president behind bars. Could you imagine? That is possible in this country right now. I mean, wow. Jake says, what are were your thoughts on Doug Burgum? I Doug Burgum must have passed me by there, Jake. Let's see. Doug Burgum. Oh, governor of North Carolina. No clue. Jake, sorry. Uh, What is he? Yeah, somehow he has skipped past me. Mike says he's out of the race. He's irrelevant. So... Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if there's anything else on my list here. Oh, the whole thing in Texas with the border is very interesting. There's a whole constitutional element to it. I don't plan on diving into that right now. We can do a broadcast on that another time. But the thing the thing that I heard now, you know I lived in Texas for five years. I was on KRLD in Texas. And as a matter of fact, I, I st- the number one state still where I have followers is Texas. So it goes Texas, then Salt Lake, and then all these other countries that I'd never heard of. So those of you out of the country, thank you for watching. To all my friends in Texas, thank you for staying with me. And you'll understand what I'm talking about here. But every time Texas... Every time Texas faces some issue that they don't like, they always say, well, we're going to succeed from the union. Secede? We're going to secede from the union, not succeed. We're going to secede from the union. 
And the reason they believe that they can do this is because they're the only state that entered the United States by treaty. So they think, and that treaty allows them to secede whenever they want. So they think that at the first drop of a hat, they can just secede. And first of all, I'm like, hey, go for it. If you want to do do that and you want to deal with your borders and you want to take on all the things that the federal government has, for, do it, man. Secede. Secede. Do it. But they are mistaken in their belief system. They think that they are still under the rules that guided them when they came in by treaty. You see, they forgot about a little thing called the Civil War. In the Civil War, Texas did secede, and so did the Southern states. And so they did that. And then what happened? They got taken over by the government and were forced to come back into the Union. That canceled out your treaty, my friends. That canceled it out. It's no good. It's no longer valid. So stop saying it. (laughs) I mean, you can say you're going to secede, but stop saying that your treaty allows you to secede. That treaty is gone. It's been gone for a long time. All right, sidetrack there. Let's see. Nathan says, if the Supreme Court finds that Trump is able to be kept off the ballot in Colorado due to the 14th Amendment, that could cause a landslide of striking him from the primaries across the country. Yeah, I I got to tell you, Nathan, I really struggle with him being taken off the ballot for several reasons. Diet Dr. Pepper. For several reasons. One, it is a primary. It is not the actual election. And I believe generally that political parties should be able to decide who gets on their ballots and who doesn't. If this was a general election, I would hold that in a little bit different standard. Two, I believe in due process. And, you know, back when a lot of people asked me if Trump should be indicted for the phone call, the perfect phone call, remember the perfect phone call? And I said, no, I thought it was improper. I thought that it should be held against him in the next election, but I didn't think it rose to high crimes and misdemeanors. So now the word we're dealing with is insurrection. And the hard part about that is there's no real law or process to even charge somebody with insurrection. So who decides that? Does a state legislature decide that? Who decides when an insurrection has occurred? Now, in the state of Colorado, they did have hearings. They they did have, you know, the opportunity to present evidence. But it doesn't appear to me to be legitimate due process. And that's concerning to me. I do think that the president participated in an insurrection. I don't think that he is individually responsible for January 6th. I do believe that he tried to steal an election. And that, to me, has become very obvious with his fake electors and his undue influence on county uh, election officials. (coughs) And I do think that could be called insurrection. But even then, I don't think the, ins- the word insurrection, as far as I know, doesn't really appear in our laws. When is somebody charged? And so it becomes very difficult for me to, to say, yes, he got due process. And yes, this is exactly insurrection. I, and so how do you do it in a way that then doesn't turn totally political to where both sides can do it, 
There's got to be some type of due process here. I, and I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it is just asking the Supreme Court. But even that gives the Supreme Court too much power. I'm going to guess if I can. Where's my magic eight ball? My wife cleaned my office. I don't I don't know where my magic eight ball is. If I could guess, I believe that the Supreme Court will not uphold Colorado. And so he will be allowed on the ballot. I also believe that the Supreme Court will not agree with Trump that presidents have absolute immunity. So that's a win and a loss for Trump. And I believe that Trump will be convicted in Georgia for 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 fraud, for trying to create fake electors. He is directly tied to that. Now, does that turn into jail time? I don't know. Does that turn into insurrection? I don't know. That whole like, insurrection thing is very difficult. It needs to be shored up. And there's not going to be time to shore it up before the, the election. So I don't think I've answered your question at all. <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Let's see here. Uh, anybody else? Mike says, I'm under the uh, weather advisory. Got to go for now. Talk later. Mike, be safe out there. You're in the you're in the tornado zone, aren't you? So be safe. Anything else you guys want to talk about? I think I was just coming on to test this out to see if we could go on TikTok and Facebook and Twitch and all those places. I think we did it. I think we pulled it off. So I think this is how I'm going to come to you live. This way I can go to every single platform. If you're on TikTok, I'm sorry you can't see the comments from Facebook and YouTube and all of those platforms. They can see your comments. I don't know if that's fair or not, but that's just the way it is. Jake says, oh, what should conservatives do that aren't fans of the Trump hijacked Republican Party? <sighs> Jake, you always have the hard questions, don't you? I, You know this, Jake, because we've talked about it via text and stuff. I'm going to give it all I can. I'm going to do everything in my power to spread a message, to try and change hearts and minds. I'm going to do everything I can while still maintaining a day job, while trying to still support my family. I've decided that I'm just going to do everything I can and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. And I, I honestly, I don't have a bright hope right now. I, in a weird way, this is going to sound really weird, but in a weird way, maybe the best thing that can happen to this country is that Trump wins and he doesn't get convicted. I've actually never even had that thought until just this second. Because if he's not convicted and he does win, then yeah, we'll have four years of Trump and the Constitution will protect us. I don't believe any president can destroy a nation and will survive it. But if he doesn't win or he gets convicted, his claims of a witch hunt, of a corrupt Biden administration going after him, suddenly turn into fire. And if he doesn't win the election against Biden, he's going to make the same fraud claims which will turn into fire. So in the weirdest way, maybe Trump just needs to win. Jake says, and then serves four years and fades into history. Because yeah, it's all he can do is four years, right? But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that he is going to be convicted in some form or fashion. I do think he's going to lose. One of the things I've said that is remarkable to me is that he's running under the same election system, the same voting machines, the same everything, and he thinks he can win. 
it doesn't that seem odd to anybody? That he's just like, he claimed fraud and this is the most corrupt system and the states and Biden stole all this stuff. And so his solution is all just run under the same election system again. Doesn't that seem a little bit odd and a little bit revealing? So he's going to run under the same system. If he wins, then that means the system was great and it's the greatest victory ever in all time. If he loses, it was stolen. And that creates fire. So yeah, Jake, you made me just realize maybe, (laughs) wow, crap. I can't even believe I'm saying it. Maybe the best thing is for him to win. What a world we live in. That is crazy. Diana Lang, thank you for following. I appreciate it. James Vogel, thank you for, for watching. If you're just joining us, we are live on... TikTok, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, all of the good ones. We've had a great discussion today about just about everything. My plan is to, now that I've got this set up, I'm going to go live on a regular basis. But please know every single day I'm posting at least four videos to whatever platform you are on. And they are not just about politics. They're about my observations about life. I think some of them will make you laugh. I know they'll make you think, and please always share your comments with me along the way. Jake says, sorry about that. No, Jake, it was a good question. It was a good question, and something I'm going to have to think about a little bit. All right, so with that, I think we're done today after about an hour and 49 minutes. That was a good marathon, everybody. I'm going to let you go. Have a wonderful evening, and. I will catch you soon. Let me see. How do I close this thing? I've never even done a live. I've never even ended a live. I think we've done it. Everybody, good night.